say that I'm a dreamer And I've no doubt there's truth in what they say But you're a body's bound to be a dreamer When all the things he loves are far away And precious things are dreams unto an exile They take him o'er the land across the sea Especially when it happens he's an exile From that dear lovely Isle of Finnish Free And when the moonlight peeps across the rooftops Of this great city Scarcely feel its wonder or its laughter I'm once again back home in Ninish The Isle of Inish Free, immortalised in the W.B. Yeats poem, and of course equally well known as the theme song from The Quiet Man, starring John Wayne and Maureen O'Hara. But to the thousands of Irish who have left over the years, the Isle of Inish Free is about Ireland itself. They are going, 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 the poet said, and we cannot bid them stay. But wherever they go, they make their mark, and we hope that they all someday will return to the Green Island. Nobody knows the answers How the dark clouds keep rolling each day Casting a shadow upon us From Antrim to Sweet Bantry Bay In their droves all the people are leaving Short is worse than the Black 44 When they sailed away over the ocean With their dreams and their humble sea stores What a legacy, such a tragedy And if you serve your time on the plain In no time at all you're a chippy As good as the rest at the game In Sally O'Brien's we'll be dancing But we'll go back someday maybe when And the 
river runs up Spansel Hill What a legacy Such a tragedy Thousands are saying goodbye The land of the eagle is calling As we bid the green island goodbye It's a good time to remember the brave men and women who died, whose vision is misrepresented by the shadows who flicker and hide. They dish out their perks and their pensions while the big fella turns in his grave. See the bright diamonds and jewels Cast on the cold crest of a wave What a legacy, such a tragedy Thousands are saying goodbye The land of the eagle is calling As we bid the green island goodbye As we bid the Green Island goodbye As we bid the Green Island goodbye Tis it is the Shannon's brightly glancing stream Brightly gleaming Silent in the morning beam Oh, the sight in transit. Thus returned from travels long, years of exile, years of pain, to see old Shannon's face again. Oh, the water's landing. John Fitzgerald Kennedy's last words spoken on Irish soil, June 1963. Now, those words were spoken beside the Shannon River. And those of you who use Shannon Airport will know that. The Shannon River is one of the last things you see when you're leaving Ireland. It is, of course, one of the first things you see when you return. Now, at the mouth of the Shannon lies Limerick. And Limerick is not just a city. It is also a lady. Waking in the arms of this 
distant waters A new day finds me far away from home In Limerick, you're my lady The one true love that I have ever known The gift that time has made to travelers on their way seeking out the beauty of our land a shrine where children play and bells ring out to say thank god we're living just to feel the freedom of each day The beauty that surrounds you, I take it with me, love, wherever I go. While waking in the arms of distant waters, a new day finds me far away from home. Then Limerick, you're my lady. Ireland is known all over the world for its songs, for its friendly people, and not least, for its storytelling. Now, the traditional Irish storyteller is called the Shanachi, and he told stories which were handed down from generation to generation. Now, you would find him by a kitchen fireside, sitting on a bridge, or in an old Irish pub. And if you come with me in here, with any luck at all, we will find Ireland's most famous storyteller, Eamon Kelly. Hello, Eamon. How nice to see you in this lovely and unusual place. Uh, indeed it is, and it is in places like this that uh, people in the old days, and some of them are still going, went away to America. Many of them remained in America forever, and some came back. And I remember like it was yesterday, the night that Con Sweeney came home from America, it was Christmas Eve, and he walked in the door and he had a gangster's hat and you could see yourself in the shine that was in his shoes and there was a crease in his trousers that had shaved a gooseberry for you and the tie he had around his neck, well, it was so red, I wouldn't like any bull to see it. He put a bottle of Paddy Flaherty on the table and the cock was taken off and there was a sup all round and then he took out a packet of American cigarettes and he gave one round to everyone, and they lit up. And the, when they were smoking the cigarettes for a while, the next thing was they began to explode. And they took them out of their mouths and they exploded in their hands. And then they threw them on the floor. And the cigarettes, this is some American trick, they exploded the floor, to, like Dunkirk. And Connie's mother was there with water, splashing the water, and she was like the servant girl who threw a bucket of water in Sir Walter Rally when she first saw him smoking the pipe, thinking that the man was on fire. What a night we had. The first thing he did when he came home was to buy a car, what he called an automobile, one of the old Fords, and it was the first motor car to come into our parish. And the backfiring of that instrument going the road, it drove all the animals wild. And farmers coming out from town, they were hopping off the sides of side cars and they were taking off their coats and hanging the coats over the horse's head so that he wouldn't see the car until it was gone. And Sweeney was a reckless driver. And failing to take a sharp turn, he went through Connie Casey's gate, broke it, and knocked down a cone side in the field. And two men that were there, seeing their first car, one of them turned to the other and he said, wouldn't you imagine, he said, for a thing that could run so fast that it would be able to jump as well? <laughs> 
Well, Casey went into the field and he knelt down alongside the cow, as grief-stricken as if she was his own mother. And when he came out, the neighbor said to him, Connie, they said, is the cow dead? No, he said, she's not dead at all, but she don't know anyone. And the yank put his hand in his pocket and took out a fistful of dollars and he paid Casey for the damage that was done to the cow and to the gate. And that dried up the tears, I can assure you. If you're Irish, come into the parlor. There's a welcome there for you. And if your name is Timothy or Pat, so long as you come from Ireland, there's a welcome on the mat. If you come from the mountains of Morn or Killarney's lake so blue, we'll sing you a song and we'll make a fuss. Whoever you are, you're one of us. If you're Irish, this is the place for you. Hannigan was an Irish man who came from Erin's Isle. He was a rogue who had a rogue in here for half a mile. When Hannigan gave a hooly well, the news soon got about. So oh, you may be a stranger if you pass him by, he'd shout, Hey, come into the parlor, sure, and make yourself at home. Come into the parlor, sure, you won't be on your own. There's Mick Mickey and there's Rafferty, there's Murphy and Muldoon. They say McGilligan's daughter doesn't know the taste of water. There's pints of stout sticking out, there's gruff for half the town. There's gallons of good potching if you want to watch it down. So if you're Irish, you're sure of a welcome. For there's a Julian in Hannigan's house tonight. Have you ever been in love, me boys? Or have you felt the pain? I'd sooner be in jail myself than be in love again. For the girl I loved was beautiful, I'll have you all to know. And I met her in the garden where the praties grow. She was just the sort of creature, boys, that nature did intend. To walk right through the world, me boys, without the Grecian bend. Nor did she wear a chignon, I'll have you all to know. And I met her in the garden where the praties grow. Come single, bell and bow, and to me pay attention. Don't ever fall in love, tis the devil's own invention. Well, once I fell in love with a maiden so bewitching, Miss Henrietta Bell, out of Captain Kelly's kitchen, with me to a lure la me to a lure laddie, me to a lure la and me to a lure laddie. Way down in the county Kerry, near a town they call Tralee, a fine old couple they live there called Kate and Pat McGee. Today's their golden wedding, and they want the world to know just how they looked when they were wed 50 years ago. Woo! Put on your elmy breeches and your coat of emerald green. Put on your hat, me darling, hat, and take off the bell carbine. Today's our golden wedding, and I want the world to know just how we looked when we were wed 50 years ago. It's a great day for the Irish. It's a great day for fair. The sidewalks of New York are thick with Blarney. For sure you'd think New York was El Killarney. It's a great day for the shamrock, or the flags in full array. And as we go a swinging, every Irish heart is singing. It's a great, great day. And as we go a swinging, every Irish heart is singing. It's a great. Well, from some old Irish party songs to a newer one. This is my part of Ireland, the liberties of Dublin. This, of course, is the oldest part of the city, and I remember growing up here as a child. I remember going to school across the road. I remember the children, the friends, the neighbors. You know, many things in Dublin have changed over the years, but one thing has remained the same, the people. I will remember them, and of course, the rare old times. <laughs> Thank you. 
Raised on songs and stories Heroes of renown The passing tales and glories That once was Dublin town The hallowed halls and houses The haunting children's rhymes That once was Dublin City in the rare old times. Ring a ring a rosy as the light declines. I remember Dublin City in the rare. Dublin as can be Born hard and late In Pimlico In a house that sees to be By trade I was a cooper Lost out to redundancy Like my house that fell I trace a memory And I courted Peggy Dignan As pretty as you please Ah, a rogue and a child of Mary From the rebel liberty
city in the rare times. Well, the large variety theatres like the Theatre Royal may have gone, but live entertainment is still very much a going concern in Ireland. Jury's Irish Cabaret has been running for almost 30 years now and has been seen by more than two million people. I joined the cast a few years ago and since then, I've had the pleasure of singing for people from all over the world. And you know, there is one song we just cannot leave out. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling from glen to glen and down the mountainside. The summer's gone. And all the flowers are dying Tis you, tis you must go And I must bide But come ye It's I'll be here in sunshine or in shadow. Oh, Danny boy, oh, Danny boy, I love you. When ye come, and all the flowers are dying, and I am dead, as dead I well may be, you'll come and find the place where I am. An ave there for me. And I shall hear, though soft you tread above me. And
Danny Boy, the most famous Irish song of all. A song that's as universal as the sentiment it expresses, the sorrow over a loved one's parting. There are, of course, also songs about people being joined together. This is the Irish wedding song. Here they stand, hand in hand, they've exchanged wedding bands. Today is the day of their dreams and their plans. And all we who love them just wanted to say, may God bless this couple who marry today in good times and bad times in sickness and health may they know that riches are not needed for wealth and help them face problems they'll meet on their Who marry today? May they find peace of mind comes to all who are kind. May the hard times ahead become triumphs in time, and may their children be happy. God bless this family who started today. As they go, may they know a real love that will show. And as life gets shorter, may their feelings grow. Wherever they travel, wherever they stay, may God bless this couple who marry today. In good times. Sickness and health. May they know that riches are not needed for wealth and help them face problems they'll meet on their way. Oh, God bless this couple who marry. When the autumn days are here again And the night winds chilly blow The woodlands turn to gold and hue And the harvest moons aglow To hear again of days long past When I mowed Pat Murphy's meadow in the sunny long ago, I see again the ocean and the distant sails afar as the maiden in. 
dark love in the garden. There was music soft and tender in the winds that whispered low. When I mowed Pat Murphy's meadow in the sunny Dance the gay quadrille, or the singer that warbles sweetly the burning granite mill. To hear again at sunset where sweet afton waters flow. When I mowed at Morphy. Meadow in the sunny long ago. Those days are golden memories, like the snows of yesteryear. And when evening shades are falling, all alone I shed a tear. My cheek, I feel the soft touch of the wind that whispered low. When I mowed at Murphy's meadow in the sunny long ago. When I mowed at Murphy's meadow in the sunny. Pat Murphy's Meadow, another old Irish song, and once again the theme of emigration runs through it. Well, just over that hill is the home of a very good friend of mine, whom I meet every night in my work in Jury's Cabaret. He is Ireland's greatest comedian, Hal Roach. Let's go visiting. Well, we certainly picked a nice day for a chat, Tony, didn't we? And thank you for having us at your home, Hal. Oh, I'm delighted to have you here. When you're not in Jury's Hal, you travel all over the world. Tell me, how do international audiences react to Irish humour? Oh, remarkable. But they have to understand what you're talking about. I was the first stand-up uh, comedian, Irish comedian, ever to go to the States, by the way. And um, it took me a long time to get in. I was making many, many mistakes when I first went there first because I thought uh, telling jokes there was the same as telling them here. You have to be careful with words like wardrobe is closet, um, windscreen is windshield. Uh, funny, a caravan is a motorhome. In the States. Yeah. Well, and if you're telling a joke that incorporates any of these words and you say the wrong one, it can die. But to answer your question remarkably well, and, uh, and I, I, I adore American audiences, I really do. But tell me, are there any stories you enjoy telling more than others to international audiences? Well, there's a few uh, sort of sure-fire uh, jokes, you know, that I use. Uh, I use them mostly as a standby where things maybe are not quite that big, so I know that I have a little uh, standby here. But of course, naturally, um, to tell a story out here in the middle of nowhere, with the wind blowing and the sun shining, of course, uh, would be no good because we don't have an audience, uh, right? No audience. Or maybe we do. Have a look at this. <laughs> I wish I could be out there with you listening to this. It's fantastic stuff, it really is. There's no doubt about it. Murphy got a job on a construction site. There's an accident on the site and he lost his ear in the accident. Eight of the lads are walking around the site looking for his ear. And O'Reilly said, Murphy, we found it. It is on the ground in front of you. And Murphy looked down and said, it is not mine. <laughs> O'Reilly said, how do you know? He said, mine had a pencil in it. <laughs> Dear God. <laughs> <laughs> Write it down. It's a good one. <laughs> well, this is certainly a lovely home. You must have a lot of fun here, Hal. 
Oh, a lot of fun here, believe me. We do John, of course, and uh, <clears throat> we have a few ponies and chickens and donkeys and all that sort of thing. But um, uh, I very rarely tell gags, as you know, jokes off, off stage. Yeah. Uh, but this, I think, will appeal to you. When I first came here, uh, there was a fellow stopped at the gate and he said, I'm a handyman. And he said, I'll do any job that needs doing on this property for 20 pounds. I said, why not? Why not, indeed? Will you paint my porch? He said, yes. So he disappeared and he got his gear and he came back. He was missing for three hours and he came back and I said, did you paint the porch? He said, I did. He said, but you're a comedian and you try to fool me. He said, it's not a Porsche, it's a Mercedes. <laughs> 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 Write it down, it's a good one. <laughs> well, Hal, thanks very much for having us. It's, it's really been lovely talking to you as ever. Oh, it's and great having you, Tony. And I'm, I'm thrilled, by the way, to be uh, a special guest on your programme. It really is My really honour, I assure you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Hal. Well, like Hal Roach, this next song has travelled the world. And wherever Irish people gather from Boston to Bangkok to Baghdad, someone will take out a guitar and sing a chorus of the most popular Irish song in recent years, The Fields of Athenry. <laughs> By a lonely prison wall I heard a young girl calling Michael, they have taken you away For you stole Trevelyan's corn so the young might see the morn Now a prison ship lies waiting in the bay Oh, lie the fields of Bath and Rye Where once we watched the small free birds fly By a lonely prison wall I heard a young man calling Nothing matters, Mary, when you're free Against the famine and the crown I rebelled they cut me down Now you must raise our child with dignity Oh, lie the fields of Bath and Rye, Where once we watched the small free birds fly As 
the prison ship sailed out against the sky. But she lived in hope and pray for her love in Botany Bay. It's so lonely round the fields of that and I. the small free birds fly our love was on the wing we had dreams and songs to sing it's so lonely round the fields of Athen it's so lonely The fields of Athenry. Well, that's just part of my Ireland. Ireland with its songs and stories. When you're away, think of us fondly because we think of you. And we look forward to the time when we can say, Falchi Arash. Welcome back to Ireland, the Green Island. Walking all the day near tall towers where falcons build their nests, silver winged they fly. They know a call of freedom in their breast. Saw black head against the sky. With twisted rocks, they run down to the sea. Living on your western shore, saw summer sunsets asked for more stood by your Atlantic sea and sang a song for Ireland talking all the day with true friends who try and make you stay Telling jokes and news And singing songs to pass the time away Watch the Galway salmon run Like silver dancing Darting in the sun Living on your western shore song Summer sunsets asked for more Stood by your Atlantic sea And sang a song for Ireland Drinking all the day In old pubs where fiddlers love to play Someone touched a boat and played a reel that seemed so grand and gay. Stood on Dingle Beach and cast in wild foam and found Atlantic bass. Living on your western shore, saw Summer sunsets asked for more Stood by your Atlantic Sea And sang a song for Ireland Dreaming in the night 
I see a land where no one has to fight But waking in the dawn I see you crying in the morning light Lying where the falcons fly They twist and turn in the rain Summer sunsets ask for more. I stood by your Atlantic sea and sang a song.